It's time for a new evolution in raising golfers, one that doesn't involve headaches, tears, or heading down the path of unknown. Whether you're trying to introduce children to the game of golf, help them play competitively, or play at a collegiate level, you're in the right place. This show is for any parent, player, or coach who wants to build a better team at home and on the golf course. This is the Raising Golfers Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Raising Golfers podcast. I am your host, Travis Hauser, your PJ professional here in Carlsbad, California. And I am taking a break this week between our Operation 36 semesters. We just finished the 2022 semester and we'll be sp- starting our spring 2022 semester the following week. And, you know, I think as much as I love coaching golf and spending time at the golf course, I actually just came back with my two boys just for some fun. It is good to have a little recharge, a little break, and I think it also gives some time to reflect on things and think about what things are working, what things aren't, what areas can be improved in, and that's for me just being a golf coach for our golf academy. Now, the same can be true for our junior golfers taking breaks from the game of golf. If you even just look at your jobs, you know, taking a break from work It's research shows it increases focus when the employees return to work from those breaks. Uh, It also improves their productivity and it probably just helps, which is their overall morale and mental health and well-being around the idea of going to work. So, you know, for athletes who train or let's just say you're going to the gym, doing a lot of weightlifting, breaks are also good as well because they allow time for your body to recover, which prevents injuries. And then it'll allow you to train harder and faster for longer periods of time in the future. And again, so just a couple of ideas about why breaks are important. So for our children in sports, I think it's important too. And from what I've seen, there's good research that shows children need breaks from sports. And often I think if we push them too hard, I think we can lead them in the direction of an outcome that we don't want. And that could be potentially quitting the sport because they've just burnt out or maybe leading to some type of physical injury because they've just done the repetition too many times in a short period of time and worked too hard and trained too hard in that area. I also think it'll help with them mentally and emotionally. And, you know, really, I think if you look at it, we would hope that your goal is that you can play golf with your children for the rest of their lives. So a little break here and there never hurt anyone. Now, when does your child need a break? You know, sometimes we just won't know. And a couple ideas I have would be maybe that you could take a break or your junior golfer, I'm sorry, could take a break after a tournament season. So a lot of junior golfers who compete, they play in a lot of tournaments throughout the summer. So maybe in September, Come September, it might be a good month for your junior golfer to take a break, you know, and just just have them take a step away from practicing and training and playing so hard. And that might be a good time for them also to do a little bit of reflection and think about different parts of their game. And from what I've seen, when junior golfers do take these breaks, a lot of them come back even stronger and more motivated and more prepared and more refreshed. And it's great to see sometimes, that's for sure. Another idea you could have if you're trying to figure out when to take a break or have your junior golfer take a break, it could just be a set time every year. If it's not after tournaments, it could be, you know, the month of December. Hey, you know, we want to focus on family time. We want to focus on travel, other activities, those kinds of things. And you could just set that every single year to take a break at that time. And that might be a good time for your junior golfer just to know mentally and have them mentally prepared that that's the month they're going to step away from the sport and just take a, a short little break. Now. Um, if there are signs, you might start seeing things such as your child might start showing lack of interest or your child might start showing signs of lack of energy to go and practice and play. They might even come to you and say, Hey, I would like to take a break. And we just have to remember that that's okay. If you do have a high level competitive junior golfer, you might need a third party. You might need somebody to come help out in this area and have these discussions with your junior golfer because it can be tough for children to have these conversations with their parents, especially when they think their parents are uh, the ones who are pushing them into the sports and they might feel a little bit of resentment and be discouraged with the idea of talking to their parents and telling them that they need a break. So that might be a good sign to reach out to somebody to have you come help. 
Now, if you're going to be taking these breaks, and again, I, I think it's great to have little breaks here and there, a comeback action plan might be necessary or it might help smooth out the breaks. So, you know, you can work with the junior golfer on deciding how long the initial break might be. And this could be lengthened if the junior golfer wants to. It, may, it might just be like, hey, you know, what? we're going to take a break for a month. Four weeks into it, you might realize, you know, what? let's take another week or two off. You know, I think I still need a little bit more time. And now let's hear a message from our show sponsor. Hey, guys. This last spring, I teamed up with Operation 36 here at our facility in Carlsbad, California, and it has completely changed my way of coaching and service to my customers. Operation 36 is a developmental golf program designed to take beginners from playing their first round to being able to shoot par or better for nine holes. So here's how it works. Participants attend weekly one-hour classes and work through a six-level curriculum. They then play in nine-hole events once or twice a month with a common goal to shoot 36 or better from different distances. And using the Operation 36 app, coaches can plan programs, communicate with families, and track students' progress. It's really, really cool. If you're a parent listening, search for a program near you on their website at operation36.golf forward slash juniors. And coaches, if you'd like to start a program at your facility, go to the same website, operation36.golf forward slash coaches. Then the next thing would be to have a plan on how to fill the time with other activities when otherwise would be spent practicing and playing at the golf course. So, you know, if your junior golfer is practicing, let's just say 10 hours a week, well, if you cut that out of their their weekly schedule, you've got to have a plan to fill that other time because if not, then the junior golfer is going to be thinking, well, geez, I should be practicing, I should be playing, and they might jump back into the sport just a little bit too soon and, again, lead down the path of maybe some burnout too soon for them without taking enough time to take a break. And then you can also think of how to start re-engaging your junior golfer back into the sport. So let's just say you've taken a month off. Week one, once we are back, let's just practice or play maybe one time. And then maybe start slowly adding in more and more play for the junior golfer uh, as long as the energy levels, the excitement, the passion, all that stays high. And, um, you know, if they do take a break, you know, keep in mind that for a lot of these junior golfers, their whole golf community around them, their friends, their buddies are all related to the sport. So keeping them in communication with those friends is extremely important. We don't want to just cut them off from all their golf buddies by just stopping them going to the golf course. Maybe what we need to do is help them organize some type of an event outside of the golf course where maybe they go and they do something together, do another activity, do another sport together, whatever it may be. And that way, they're still having their the camaraderie, their friends, all their friendships and communication and conversations with all their good friends. And it doesn't always have to necessarily be tied just with being at the golf course. Now, the last thing I would say would be depending on your player's age and their current skill level or willingness for playing golf at a high level, you might also need to put together a plan for fitness and physical training and some ideas of how to keep them in shape in the time off. Because if they're doing weekly trainings or group trainings or gym sessions or whatever it may be, again, cutting that out, that, you know, it, it could be tough getting back into it. So just kind of having a plan of what it would look like and what that action plan is going to look like for them to come back into the sport. Now, many of you parents and coaches, you know, you might be worried and thinking, so if my junior golfer takes a break, aren't they going to fall behind because of all the lost time? You know, all the other junior golfers weren't taking breaks, but my child or my student was. I think what we have to do is keep in mind that one, this is a long journey and there still is time. And two, avoiding burnout can keep your junior golfer in the sport for a long time. I've seen many, many high-level junior golfers just walk away from the sport because they burn out. I was actually having a conversation yesterday with a mom who she said that her daughters have just gotten into softball. And she said, you know, my, my daughter's nine years old, and apparently that's considered starting late. And we both agreed upon the the idea, though, is that, you know, people might kind of view it and judge it as starting late nowadays. But then if you think about it, well, what does that really mean? Because you could have some of those other players who started really, really early, which don't get me wrong, is a great thing, as long as 
it is balanced out in their life so that they truly do love this sport, whatever it may be, for the rest of their lives. Because her daughter, who just started at nine, may not be nearly as good or competitive as other nine-year-olds who've been playing for the last five years. But some of those other girls might get to a point where they say, you know what, I'm bored, or you know what, I'm burnt out, I'm going to walk away. And then her daughter continues to enjoy it and surpasses him. You know, if, if we think about peaking in sports for really any sport, I think the peak age is probably going to come after the age of 18 anyways. And that might be when it is quote unquote important to perform. But we don't even know if they're going to get there to that level. We need just to make sure that we can help them stay interested in golf or other sports for as long as possible, because I think we all do know deep down there's so many positive things that we can take away from any sport, especially a game like golf. So I hope all of you have a wonderful spring break, whether it's this week, you already had it, you have plans going forward, enjoy yourselves. Don't forget to sit down, kick up your legs, relax a little bit, and just enjoy yourselves. Golf is not everything. There. There is so much more to just the sport. There's so many more important things going on with families and friends and relationships. Golf just ties that together for many of us, but it's okay to take a step away, have a little break, reflect, rest, and come back stronger. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful week and look forward to having you here back on the podcast next week.